What you're going to learn how to do in this video is to create a synth from scratch in Europa that sounds like this, and you're going to learn how to completely use Europa so you can make any sounds that your mind dreams up. So let's take a quick listen. Stay tuned. Hey dude, what's up? Evan from Stock Music Musician, and today I've got a deep dive into the beautiful sound of Europa, one of Reason's flagship synths, and today I really want to show you every bit of how to use it. Dig into the nooks and crannies of it like a tasty English muffin. So, before we go farther, I do want to let you know that I've got a free Reason cheat sheet that walks you through all of the devices in Reason at a high level, uh, you know, just to help you get your bearings. You can download it by clicking on the link below. But this video, we're really going to go deep into all the sections of Europa. A lot of this will also actually apply to other Reason synths. So if you've got any questions about anything I talk about, just leave a comment below. And also, I'd really like to appreciate to know what your favorite synth in is Reason. In re oh, that was a brain fart. I'd like to know what your favorite synth is in Reason so that, you know, when I make videos in the future, I can actually make videos that help you. So please let me know what synths you use and like what genres you use them in. You know, is this your go to, is Europa your go to for EDM, but maybe for hip hop, you're all about the subtractor? Let me know. Cool. We're back. Here is Europa, the venerable Europa. So the way I like to think about it is you've got Along the top, you have the oscillator here, which is basically just a way of saying the sound source. And you've got three different sound sources that you can select. You notice that both all there are three, there are these columns here, and they each change based on which of the engines you select, which are the oscillators. You can turn the oscillators individually on and the processing of them on. We'll get into each of these sections in depth, but I just want to give you the overall view. Then all three of these oscillators or engines go down to this section right here, which is basically a mixer. You've got oscillator one, oscillator two, oscillator three, and the level. So you're basically controlling the level of these three instruments, and, or these three oscillators, engines, and their pan. Then you can choose whether or not they go to a global filter by selecting this, whether the engine goes to the filter, and choose the type of filter that they go to. Finally, you can shape the sound, the amplitude envelope of the sound, basically, whether it's got um, more of a pad-like sound or a pluck-like sound, and the overall volume. Here you have some performance choices, whether it's polyphonic, whether you're playing in portamento mode and sliding around. Then you've got a big section here, both the envelope section and the LFO section, and the modulation matrix, which basically just allow you to tweak all of the other parameters that we are going to talk about in depth from those previous sections. So you can basically have, you know, this envelope shape this modifier or an LFO shape the uh, harmonics, or you can have the mod matrix from another instrument change something. Finally, down at the right, you have a bunch of effects that you can insert onto the overall sound by clicking the on or off button, reverb, compression, delay, EQ, distortion, and a phaser. And you can also drag these around internally to change their order. Got it? Cool. So let's just start to put together a really simple like little chord progression. And so we've got the main oscillator on it and it's most basic settings. So just completely reset the Europa. And maybe there's this actually on zero. Yeah. Okay. Really simple. So the first thing we do is we actually can change the tuning and the octave of that progression. And we can also detune it. or minorly in detune it, which can be helpful if you've got multiple engines going. Then you can choose the actual shape of the waveform. 
and you can see it reflected here. I'm not seeing anything on the pulse width, and I'll do stuff. That interesting to me but it also sounds in so now let's try and modify it with even some more complexity using fold um, let's try using a faded sync so as we hit play it's sort of just And we can do another modifier to it if we wanted to, but we'll just stick with one for simplicity's sake. Finally, we can filter off some of those sounds. Well, it's actually not finally, because we've got unison as well. So a filter is basically just an EQ. You just remove or add certain frequencies, but in a very musical way. So, and we'll add a little resonance. And you notice with keyboard selected, basically, that means that the peak here, keyboard all the way up, every time you move a different key, the notch or the resonant frequency will move with it. We can also set where it resonates. And you can select different types of filters as well. And you can also add harmonics to it, which just create a slightly richer sound. You notice how it goes from being a totally flat wave to, I mean, <laughs> something just totally messed up. But just a touch can bring something to life. The next stage you get is over to the unison which basically just creates various copies of the existing sound. You can choose the amount, blends them together, and maybe can slightly detune them to make them sound fatter and spread them in the stereo. We'll detune it a little less, but and how much of the original versus the unison sound and the amount of voices. Also other modes, like an octave down. Sounds pretty cool, right? Now let's mix in a second wave, so or oscillator. So we'll select engine two and turn it on with the on-off switch. Let's select a wave here. And for this, let's see how frequency modulation is gonna work. Let's start putting it down an octave. That's kind of cool, actually. Gives it that really short. I don't think we need a specific filter on this one um, or any unison. So now let's go to the mixer section. And we've got one and two. So let's pan this new one all the way to the right and we'll see how the relative volumes work. Turn it down again. 
and let's add a third one, and we'll pan this one all the way to the left. And maybe for this, we'll try more of a, um, I don't know, let's see what electromechanics sounds like. Let's add a little bit of unison on this guy too, but blend it down. Now what I want to do is filter everything together. And on this one, we'll do a uh, single variable filter, uh, low pass. And we'll select each of them to go to it. Maybe get a little drive and saturation. Let's see what frequency it's going to be. Again, it'll follow the keyboard. to the amp, and we could use this to make it actually very plucky and less pad-like. But I think the pad sound works for us here. Sort of a futuristic organ almost. Let's add some effects. We'll add a little bit of phasing. Not a ton. And we've selected the phaser mode and a little bit of reverb. So it's starting to sound pretty good, but it's stale. It doesn't evolve. It doesn't do anything. So what I want to now start doing is using these envelopes and the LFOs to modulate some of the patterns. Um, so Let's start with this, the basic one that's at the heart of everything. And I want the filter here to kind of be, instead, to slowly open up. So I'm going to draw in literally what I want it to look like. We'll also sync it to the beat. Adjust the speed, and it's going to loop. And now what I want to do is, this is envelope one, envelope two. We'll go here and we'll select envelope one and we'll choose to have it influence the filter frequency by this amount. And let's slow it down even more. Now let's take a listen. Let's also add envelope one to a few other things, just so you really get kind of the, um, its pulse throughout everything. Well, so we'll do it to the wave shape for uh, the oscillator one. And why don't we do it to the modifier here? So now we've got it affecting three different parameters, but it's all gonna be kind of organic because three different parameters are being controlled by the same thing. And so it's gonna sound hopefully lush and together. And you can do many different envelopes for many different things. But I also want to use this sign LFO. We'll also beat sync it. Um, it'll be a little faster. And why don't we have this control, the filter here. I actually do want to turn on a filter on the plucky one. Um, and we'll make it super resonant. And let's just solo this guy by turning the other two off. And I want it to be moving its butt off. So I'll select LFO one and have it really, let's see what. That's way too much. 
Let's try. Closer. I'm going to speed it up a little bit. That sounds about right. Now let's unisize it. All right, I'm turning the other guys on. Now you can also do other advanced things using this mod matrix. You can control anything with the mod matrix. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take LFO2 here. We'll beat sync it again, and we'll probably do it pretty slow. Let's start with 4-4. And so I've got envelope 2. Oops. Envelope 2 here is what is driving the modulation. And I want it to, again, just like this is like one of these knobs here. I want it to control at 100%. And the parameter I want to control AKA the destination. Oops, sorry. You click here and I want to go to the mixer and I actually want to control the pan of this guy here. And so now if we were to just solo that for that one, we should now have this shape moving this pan knob back and forth. It's a little hard to hear because it's so plucky. If we were just... And so, basically, using this matrix, you can create anything you could envision, imagine. Like, don't be limited by these buttons because that's only really the part of it. And so now let's put it all together. And you know what we could even have like, look at this envelope four. That's pretty crazy, right? Why don't we have envelope four? I don't know, what should, what should it control? Well, why don't we have it control just the volume? Sure, I mean, it can, it can control anything, but the volume of engine three, the engine three level by not completely take it over, but we'll see what happens. Now that sounds pretty cool, right? Pretty cool. And this isn't like, a, I mean, you know, there's no low notes in this. I could drop some bass notes in it. You know, like we could even <laughs> to turn off one and two and start sort of from scratch and make this in, instead into like more of a bass sound. We'll just do a basic analog and... Sounds pretty cool to me. Maybe let's have a little delay. And then we're gonna use other good stuff. Why not? A 
So there you have it. That is almost everything, except for one last fun thing. You see there's all these CV ins and outs here. So basically you could put anything you wanted in to control any of these parameters. So let's say we've got like, I'll just do a quick, 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 quick read drum, right? I've got like my drum beat here. Then take the gate out of the kick drum. So that basically means every time the kick drum triggers, it'll send a signal into Europa. And we can then choose for CV input one, which is where I plugged it in to, oops, to affect, let's say like the filter resonance, sure. Or the filter frequency. And so the frequency should theoretically jump every time we drive it. We'll see. of the snare every time that hits um control like envelope one um shape sure oops it should be cv2 and so it'll make the shape jump every time the snare hits engine one shape well wow, let's see Squishing and squashing. Or we could have it. You know, control. It's best if it turns something on or off because it's an on or off value. There you go. That's the deep dive into Europa. I really hope it showed you some of the exciting things you can do with this synth. Uh, be sure to download your free cheat sheet for using all the devices in Reason, just to give you an overview of it. And uh, let me know what you'd like me to cover in the future. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.